What do you think, people? Are we going to see the sun disk this morning with all this cloud? So I have my doubts. I hear me doubts. So I want to do something else with you there. And we're going to walk this direction, maybe a little bit in this direction. I want you to see the mountains of Lebanon. That's pretty far away, don't you think? Well, it's probably less than an hour's drive. Or a good hour's drive up to the top of that mountain from here. And let me explain to you in a moment about that. So, <clears throat> An interesting thought came this morning about who is God, you know? And we say he is creator and we say he is provident Lord, he provides for us. And we say he is redeemer. So we have very many different words for God actually beautiful words that mean so much but one of the thoughts this morning reading today's readings was God is a God who preparing people for covenant he, he is dedicated to preparing people for covenant and really all people and then he had a trial run to prepare a people in order to reach all peoples to be a little problem here with Wi-Fi. Um, I'm going to I'm going to switch the Wi-Fi. Okay, if it gets cut off, just you're still there. We lost some people, but I think we got most everybody. So there we can see the hills again of bordering Lebanon in the distance. That's Migdal. And there we see those mountains uh, that constitute the natural border between Israel and Lebanon. And there's still more west of those ones, as you can see, but we won't see them all because the building is blocking them and also we're a little bit too low down. Well, not too much. You can basically see towards the end there. And when you're up there, you can definitely see the Mediterranean when you're up at that mountain and you're not too far from Naharia, which is right on the border of Israel and it's the border place. It's actually an old tunnel when the train used to go all the way from from uh, Cairo all the way to Damascus and beyond and to Beirut, to Beirut in, in, uh, in Lebanon. So I came to the map here because this map helps us to understand what's going on today in the gospel reading. We're going to get back to Jeremiah and the preparing the people for covenant which is also going on in the gospel. So it says at the very opening line of the gospel is Jesus goes to Tyre and Sidon in Phoenicia. Now, first of all, the point I'm making with this map is that it helps us to see Galilee in the context of, I love that big G there, uh, Galilee. Uh, it helps us to see Galilee in the context of all the surrounding regions. So here we have um, Caesarea Maritima over here to the right, which definitely is not Galilee. I, I must go down into the map. Let's go down there, okay? So here we have Caesarea Maritima. And that's over in the Mediterranean. And we have Megiddo, and then Jacob's Well, which is in Biblical Samaria, it's in, today in the West Bank and the Palestinian territories. And here we have Jerusalem, which is a long way from here. It's a week's walk for normal people walking to, from Galilee to Jerusalem. And then over here we have Bethany across the Jordan, with, not the Bethany at the Mount of Olives, Bethany across the Jordan, which is the Bethany that, where John the Baptist is baptizing, across from Jericho, more or less. 
And then we have here the Decapolis. And the Decapolis is where Jesus goes after the today's gospel story. And where's the Decapolis? Well, the Decapolis actually starts across the lake here at Hippos. It's the town of the Decapolis. And then the Decapolis goes as far as Philadelphia, not in Pennsylvania, but Philadelphia in Jordan, which is today the same location as Amman, the capital of Jordan. So somewhere here between Hippos on the Sea of Galilee and Amman, the capital of Jordan, which is about an hour and a half drive if you had no obstacles and no national boundaries, you go down the Jordan Valley, maybe let's say two hours drive better because it's about the same distance as Jerusalem is from here and you would be in Amman. So uh, somewhere in there, that's the trip Jesus makes. It's a lot of walking people. Go back up to the mountains of Lebanon and that's why also coming to the Holy Land is a great idea when you go on pilgrimage. You get to understand the places and the geography, which you can also obviously study that at home. And to realize that it's not just the words that are in the scriptures, it's a lot of deeds, a lot of actions, a lot of places. And to understand the story, it's good to put these things in relationship. And that's also the purpose of this map. You can also find this map if you want to look at it a little more closely on our website, magdala.org, and you can actually be part of the map. And that's also another little feature of the scriptures is the scriptures aren't just an account that you read like a novel or a fairy tale or a book of history about Napoleon or about Alexander the Great. The, the Bible wants you to be part of the story. You are part of the story. It's actually for you. And today what's very interesting is we see uh, Jesus teaching the disciples that they have to understand how the covenant works and that the whole chapter 15 of Matthew has a lot in it and it finally ends up here with the boat pulling in here at Magadan some people say that that's Magdala Nun Migdal Nun is the Hebrew name here the Tower of Fish Migdal Nun Magadan so here we have Jesus going and he's going to raise the woman's daughter in, in Tyre and Sidon. I think it's near Sidon. So these are poor towns up on the coast of present-day Lebanon. Shadi, good morning. Out to work early this morning, you know. So th this is very interesting uh, to see the way Jesus is doing it. And if you read the earlier passage in the gospel, the people who understand the, and study the Torah all the time are actually moving into a very strong place of opposition to Jesus. And Jesus is talking with them about the covenant, what the covenant means and what the law means. And he was pointing out how some of their behavior was actually counter to the law, even though they were doing it in the name of the law. And so he's reviewing with them how the covenant is being lived. And part of the covenant is also having a way of living that is keeping the covenant, reminding people of the covenant. So, and part of that is kosher, having a certain type of food and having a certain type of uh, social code and being a faithful people. And one of the big teachings is what comes out of the heart is much more important than what we eat, what makes us pure, what makes us truly belonging to God is what's in our heart. And here what we see with this woman in Sidon is she has extraordinary faith. And that's coming from the heart. Now, what we eat was part of the covenant for the Jewish people before they had to keep a lot of different rules because that was forming them to become a people capable of the covenant. Little 
butterfly. And this looks probably like a Hyrex. And another different color butterfly. Just above the G of Galilee. So that's a very interesting thought that now the people had to keep to themselves. They were a separate people. God chose them to be a special people for himself. But that's a provisional measure because he wants to bring all people into the covenant. And so here we have this big contrast of people who are really, let's say, professionals of studies of the law of God, having a very hard time dealing with Jesus. And we have this woman from Tyre and Sidon, the Phoenicians, they're like almost enemies of the people, many, very bad history with the chosen people. And they are opening their hearts and their faith. Because the covenant is being, is continuing to grow and to develop, and now it's getting ready to receive everybody. So the division won't be ethnic anymore. It's going to be based on faith. Do you believe in in, this is the point of the Gospels. Do you believe in Jesus? And this woman has faith and she's very blessed through that faith. Her daughter is cured. And Jesus tests her faith immensely. If you read the story, you'd say it's almost cruel. But she reaches a faith just like a coach is testing his players, testing their capacity to weight lift testing their speed, testing their teamwork. This is forming a people capable of covenant. And really our whole life, that's what God is doing in his providence. He's forming us to be faithful. Even if things are not going well at any given moment, we can still be faithful. And that's really the formula of marriage which is a covenant in good times or in bad times. I'm not just going to love you for today while things are good. I'm loving you in good times and bad times. If we're very wealthy and we're blessed with a lot of material success and good business, I will be loving you. But also if our business fails, I will still love you. I will love you and dedicate my whole life to you. Not until somebody nicer shows up. No, I will be faithful to you until death. And so all of human life is really a preparation for this covenant. And now the, the disciples have to begin to digest the fact that this lady from Tyre and Sidon can easily be a member of their community. Not just a local here like Mary of Magdala and Mary of Cleophas and the other women and the fishermen from around the lake and even tax collectors like Jewish people who had gone a bit bad and gone with the Romans and were unfaithful to their people. They were part of the opposition to their people. Their heart has to open to be able to accept the other, to be able to accept the person who's different. And that's a big education for all of us, to learn how wide is God's covenant how open it is. And he's training us and teaching us for this greatness, for this, uh, this generosity, for this fidelity. God is an extraordinary teacher and trainer and coach of covenant capable people. He's your covenant capable counselor. He is your covenant capable, capable consulter. He is your covenant capable enabler. He enables us to be capable for covenant. He enables us to forgive. He enables us to open our hearts, to start again, to persevere. And so our covenant that we have in many different forms in our life, even a work agreement, can become a reflection of the covenant that God is building to embrace all people in that great arch of his love. And we reflect it in the covenants in our lives. Even two friends playing, 
they agreed to play. And they keep the rules because they want to keep a good relationship with each other. To reflect that covenant. And wouldn't that be a great way to see our lives? How good of a covenant builder am I? Do I get people into more hostility toward each other? Do I provoke more conflict? Or am I a person who builds toward covenant? That's a lot for today, people. I'm not sure if I've gone over time, but the sun rises in many ways in our hearts. We can see the sun disk some days, today we don't. And that's okay, because the covenant is rising in our hearts. And we ask also the Lord to bless this region. There we can see Lebanon behind those mountains, where people are suffering very much today with very difficult political challenges. And we can see, well, we can't see <laughs> over to Syria today because of the cloud. And we can't see to Jordan either because of the cloud, which you could see them in a clear day. And we pray for the renewal of fraternal relationships, of family relationships for the entire human family, reaching to the Ukraine and Russia, that we'll all be able, able and capable of covenant. People, that's a lot for today.